Hello and welcome to this live workshop on how to get comfortable with luxury. And you might think that that is a silly question because of course you'd be comfortable with lots of luxury in your life. And maybe you are in that case, well, great for you. But what I really have noticed with many people is that we refuse ourselves what it is we really want. And we tell ourselves, well, if I want all this luxury in my life, is that really, is that really on? Can I really want that? Or don't I need to feel very guilty about it? And my point here is that it doesn't feel good to be guilty or to feel guilty. And if we have got a desire for luxury, well, then I think we should pay attention. So what I'm talking about now today, hello, welcome as you're dropping on. How wonderful to see you all here. And everybody's got their camera on. That's so great, fantastic. So I was saying that if you desire luxury, it's not the same as needing luxury because some of us can get a little bit dependent on luxury. Uh, maybe that's not your case. It certainly isn't mine because I like luxury. And I also like sobriety, if I can call it like that. I also like not having a lot of things and not needing a lot of things. And I think the whole difference is here. So I can allow myself to desire luxury because it makes me feel so good and I can enjoy luxury. I don't need it, right? If somebody told me no more luxury in your life, uh, I would feel sad, but it wouldn't destroy me, right? I don't need luxury to fill me up. I don't need luxury to tell me who I am, but I want to enjoy it, right? I really want to enjoy it. And I think if we can allow our, ourselves to enjoy it and have that be okay that we do enjoy it, then I think we are ready to have a lot more luxury in our lives. If you're here live, please feel free to comment as we move on. Otherwise, if you're here and you stay till the end, then I'll be very happy to coach you or to answer any questions. And while I'm thinking of it, I'll just put the link to our workbook into the chat in case you want to go and get it. So the link to the workbook is in the chat and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And maybe you want to fill it out right here live if you're watching the replay maybe you want to fill it out and then pause if you want some extra time but I'm not going to allow for a lot of time to fill it in because I like when things are quite fast-paced and I like to be moving along so thinking about this dichotomy of luxury and feeling comfortable wanting luxury um think about why you're why you want it. And I think if it's a pure desire for luxury, then we can allow ourselves to really enjoy it and not have it define us. But if we think we need it, somehow we need it because we are not enough as we are, then that's something else. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the desire for luxury, how we can desire more luxury in our lives. And if we can allow ourselves to desire it, how can we allow it into our lives? So we get to experience more of it. So uh, why don't we just dive in? Let me perhaps share the workbook straight away. I just need to locate it. I had it right here. It's here. So so I love this, this photo I found, keep your heels head and standards high, because I am going to talk a little bit about standards. We think of luxury as, um, what was I going to say? I just, I just lost my idea. <laughs> so let's just, yeah, it's, it's the thing about standards, because if we want to allow in more luxury, then we have to be willing to up level our standards. And um, with my clients, we always look at what standards they have for their lives. And then we 
look at how we can up-level them. Because when we up-level our standards, really when we up-level what we expect, well then we start getting more of it, right? Because we're filtering out all the rest. So my first question in our workbook is, where am I making luxury the enemy? And that is sort of to personify it a little bit. Luxury as the enemy is when you don't allow yourself to have it, when you refuse yourself the luxury. So where are you making that the enemy? Is it in your house? Is it in your office? In your work? In your bedroom? Is it, is it in your clothes? Your food? Your relationships? Where is it that you're not really allowing in what you desire? And luxury, when you think about luxury, it needn't cost a lot of money. Like I'm always saying, my greatest luxury is to not have the alarm go off in the morning. My greatest luxury is waking up when I've slept enough. That is a very great luxury to me that I so appreciate every day. And maybe your greatest luxury is not a Mercedes or something that costs an enormous amount of money. Maybe it's things like that. Like I like fresh flowers. I have lots of fresh flowers in my house all the time. Sometimes they cost me a little bit of money and sometimes I just pick them. So a little, a little up-leveling of standards here is something that we could enjoy. Think about your house, anything that's really getting on your nerves that you could be getting rid of. That doesn't cost any money either to get rid of clutter, to get rid of perhaps an old wedding present that you never really liked anyway. Maybe you could get rid of it and create, create a space that would really be in alignment with what you associate with luxury. So in the workbook, I ask you to choose one area. Really just one area because we can start working on that now like we can take immediate action today on something we don't have to wait we don't have to tell ourselves that we must wait till wait till when it's convenient or wait till we have done this other thing right we can take a tiny action today actually to have a look at our house if that's where we want to up level or have a look at our clothes our work anywhere and just do one tiny thing. Like it could be going out and getting yourself some fresh flowers. That could be a tiny action to do today. My point here is when I ask you to choose just one area, it's so that you don't go into the overwhelm of it. In your food, what would luxury look like? Let's feel into this. Is there anywhere where you feel luxury? Am I resisting it? Right. Anywhere. You could perhaps think of another example in your life. I just put in very general examples. Like I feel that it's time to up-level my office space. So I'm thinking, oh, how can I up-level that? So there's nothing wrong with it, but I want to up-level it so I can be more of the person that I am becoming, if I can say it like that. So many of you here know me and you know that I want to live in a chateau and um, I need to bring in more things that will remind me of the person I am, the person who's living in a chateau. Yeah, pretty crystal glasses at home. Yes, your choice in clothes. These are all great opportunities to up-level. Andrea says travel. Wow. Yeah. It's not just where you travel to, it's also how you travel. I was just talking to my coach the other day and um, she enjoys traveling first class. And um, that is one way of up-leveling, up even though you don't talk about destinations. But what I love to, and I'm going to try that out for myself, is to go to a luxury hotel, just for me, just to try it out. 
when you put yourself in those kinds of up-level atmospheres, those new environments where you're really asked to step up, well, then you can start seeing how you react to it, right? So you might not want to put yourself into a five-star hotel, but if you could, if you've got the money for it, why don't you? Why don't you try it out and see how you feel? If you can't afford to put yourself in, maybe you want to go and sit in the lobby, right? Maybe you just want to go and sit there and soak in the atmosphere. So you might want to get dressed up for it, or maybe you want to start dressing like the person who can always be in a five-star hotel lobby. Do you see what I mean? Maybe you want to be always dressed so that you're ready, ready for your five-star experience, whatever that is, in a hotel lobby, in a spa, traveling, flying first class, whatever it is. Yes, Laurie, you do want to dress like her. And that has been a big question in my life too, because I'm constantly trying to up-level my wardrobe. Constantly, because I'm always changing. I'm always becoming more of who it is I want to be. And when you think of the person you want to be, I mean, not to say that there's anything wrong with you now, right? But we've got desires. We want to be, we want to have, we want to do. When you think of that person, how is she dressed? What does she wear? Right? And then we can start bringing some of it in because we don't have to say, oh, uh, she's wearing Chanel. Let me go and ruin myself buying Chanel outfits. Right? We can... There's something between where we are at now and Chanel, right? There's everything in between. How could we up level? So what are you saying? I lived that life before and got an accident. Need to get back on track. Oh yes, and Andrea. You do need to get back on track if you want to, if you desire to, and then you can, right? That sounds good. Laurie says, yes, I need to do that. Up level my wardrobe, yes. I think, so many people think clothes are superficial and you can go ahead and think that. I think that when we wear a certain kind of clothes, they make us feel a certain way. And I can say this because I used to be on stage. And when I dressed up to go on stage, either as a musician in a beautiful concert dress, then I helped myself, I held myself differently. But also when I, played the part of somebody else. Like I remember playing Nora in a play from Ibsen and I was wearing a corset and I was wearing a beautiful dress and it was long with a little train on it. And you know, you just, you feel different. You, you hold yourself differently, right? Everything is different. You don't move in the same way and, and you don't see yourself in the same way. So that's why I'm not for wearing baggy, holy uh, track suits, because what message are they sending you? And it's not just on a conscious level, it's really deep down on a subconscious level. What am I feeling in my clothes? And some people get upset with me because they say, oh, I don't want to be dressing up every day. I say, well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you dress up every day as if this, this is going to be the de best life, best day of my life yet, right? I'm ready for it. If I get invited to that five-star hotel, I'm ready for it, yeah? I don't have to go and worry about it because this is, this is how I want to be. This is so powerful, so, so powerful. So Andrew is saying clothes are signal, yeah. Are you a performing artist? Okay, yeah, so we know that. It's a signal. It's very true what you're saying. It is a signal. It's not a signal only to our conscious mind. It's really a, a signal to our subconscious mind. And I don't want to talk too much about that, but if you have a look at what you wear when you go to bed, what are you wearing in your bedroom? All right? Did you know you could dress up for bed? Do you know that you can actually get to choose things to wear in bed that you enjoy, that you feel 
sexy in, that you feel good in, that you feel comfortable, safe, taken care of. Also, somebody mentioned self-care. Self-care, yeah. So my next question in the workbook is, if you chose an area, pick one area, I can actually share my screen, pick one area that you want to upload. Oh, nice, Laurie, new nightgowns, that's a way to go. Yes, I love nightgowns and I love robes. I have a ton of them. So if you look in your workbook, when you've picked one area, be it in your home, your clothes, at work, your food, your leisure, your relationships, travel, Pick one area, you've picked one that you think, oh, I could up level here because this doesn't look like me. Ask yourself, if I allow myself to experience absolute luxury in this area, what would it look like? What would it look like? And I'm talking to myself here because as I said, I want to up level my office. I really want to feel that this is something extra, right? It's really something that will propel me onto my next level. And I'm so ready for it. Sometimes we think we're not ready, but we completely are. So if you're thinking about absolute luxury in one area, let me describe my office. So my office would have a gorgeous wallpaper and actually I've already got it. I haven't got the, I mean, I've got the sample for it and I would love for my office to have that wallpaper. And I would love for me to have like something gorgeous behind me. So when I do these Zoom calls, there would be something gorgeous to look at. Um, so I'm not sure about artwork, exactly what that could, be um, because I feel that it as I like figurative art I feel that it was sort of it would sort of tell people what to think and I don't want that either so do I want some quotes in gold frames it's the thought I'm playing with now right I always want my fresh flowers because they've just become part of what I enjoy in any environment so white big and some golden text Oh, golden text, Andrea. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So also, maybe I could get a um, bigger dress. I'm actually thinking about moving my office down on that side. I think that could be prettier. And then the light would be coming in from that side. So yeah, lots to think about. If I really wanted to go all out luxury, maybe I would have a, like um, either an oak what could call it office desk, or maybe I would have a marble one. Maybe I'd have a Renaissance one with like curvy legs, you know, a big gold frame behind me. So Laura says, I'm in the process of leveling my office. Yeah, up leveling. Just a huge monitor. And my husband is painting your office this weekend. Congratulations. New bookshelf behind with the fresh flowers or a plant. Yeah. And then you say you need to clean it out first. And that's another point. You really can get rid of things. You really can get rid of things you don't want anymore. They don't need to be physical things. And we're going into this a little bit deeper later or very soon, right? But try to find something that you can bring in today. What could you bring in to the environment that you're up leveling to, to have it be more luxurious. What could it be? It needn't cost money, but it could. It really could. And on the subject of luxury that costs money, I mentioned five-star hotels. Um, I know handbags speak to a lot of people and maybe you want to up level through a handbag, right? We call that sometimes a prosperity purchase. When we buy something that's a big stretch for us, and that has us feel something different than what we usually feel, then that can bring us on to change really our self-image. And that is what we're doing here, right? We're thinking, oh, I'm the person who has a Chanel handbag. But actually I bought a handbag that is from a very, very old house here in France that was made handbags for, for more than a hundred years. 
and it's not a world worldwide famous company because what I appreciate in luxury is the craftsmanship. It's the quality of the materials. It's not actually the, the label on it. I don't need it to say Chanel or Hermes or something like that. I can just have it be something that I enjoy. I can enjoy the quality of the materials and the, hand, uh, the, the craft in it, right? And so I'm willing to pay for it because I will enjoy it. And also what I love about luxury items is that they tend to last so much longer. And I love having things I love for a long time. I get upset with my clothes when they let me down, right? I really get upset when I can't wear them anymore because they're not looking as good as they used to. So I always want to be looking at how I can up level into quality. And I think luxury is also about quality. So think about it in your clothes. If you're used to getting a bunch of t-shirts for $20, well, maybe you could just get one t-shirt and let it cost $60, right? I think your enjoyment of it would be phenomenal. Also, what I like to tell myself is when I'm going to choose something, be it a dress, being at a bookshelf, I don't want to look at the price tag and have that be my choice. I want to make my choice from pure desire, looking at what would I choose if I could have any of it, which one would I choose? And then I look at the price tag. Do you see what I mean? So let's say I'm shopping for a dress. I look at all the dresses possible that I might want, and then I choose my favorite one. And then I see, is it in my budget? Is it within my budget? or not? Yeah, you're like me, always choose the most expensive, yeah. And, and sometimes we make ourselves wrong for that, don't we? We go ahead and then we make ourselves wrong for desiring those things. Yeah, has that happened to you? Maybe as a child, somebody told you, yeah, but you always want the most expensive thing. You always want whatever. And, and that, had us make, that had us feel as if there's something wrong with it. And there isn't. Yeah, Janice says you can get things on sale or from a consignment shop. Yeah, you can. You can get designer items secondhand. You're right. You are so right. So there are many ways of allowing yourself the luxury, but if you look at luxury as an investment in you, telling yourself that, wow, I'm worth that much money. If you see it as an investment, would you do it then? And I think you will only make the investment if you're confident that you will get the full value of it. And I'm going to talk about that later. How do we get the full value out of the investment we make in luxury? So if you get things on sale, yes, why not? But think about making a purchase really only out of desire. You desire it, you purchase it, you have spent perhaps money that was a stretch for you. Think about what that would say of you. What would it tell, tell your, your subconscious about you? So I really think that is something about investing in yourself in that way, in luxury. So Andrea says, my trip is to buy second hand. Oh, more expensive and tailor it to perfection. I don't understand. Your trip is secondhand. I'm not sure what you mean. Anyway, Janice says we need to feel good about ourselves first. Yes, because things will not do it for us for very long. Yes, you're right. That's called hedonistic adaptation. Right. But I'm going to talk to you about how it can feel good for the rest of your life. How can it feel good? How can you allow it to keep fueling that gratification? That is what we want 
to keep that, yeah? So moving on in the workbook, vintage ex exclusive second hand, yes, love it. Let me just move over to the workbook. So what you can say is when I default to old habits in this area, in the area you just chose, one of these or something else, Uh, when you default to old habits in this area, this is how I'll remind myself of my new standards. So, for instance, if I forget to pick my flowers or get fresh flowers from a shop, uh, I think, oh, oh, this is not on. I'm not living into my standards, into my new standards. So if you wanted to up-level in your food, and you say, I only want to eat organic food, or I don't want to eat sugar, or I only want to eat healthy food, or I want to eat vegetables with all my meals. Well, notice when you're not doing it, when you're defaulting to saying, oh, no, I can just have a sandwich without the vegetables, just notice it. And how will you choose to remind yourself that, oh, I'm not living into my standards right now. How will you choose to remind yourself? How will you notice and what will you tell yourself? Because we can get disappointed about with ourselves, can't we? We can say, oh, you're not doing it the way you want it to. You can't even do this. You can't even eat vegetables with all your meals. So you can't even get fresh flowers or whatever it is, right? And there's really no point in beating ourselves up. It's much more interesting to ask yourself, well, what happened? What's happened for me to default in to making do with something that I don't enjoy? And I was just thinking about actually meals and everything. It brought up um, my standard of having a tablecloth on my table, candles or flowers or something to make it look really gorgeous. I always have lovely china on my table, beautiful glasses like Lori. Um, I want it to look beautiful. So if I sit down at my kitchen counter and quickly waffle something down, like I've got alarm bells ringing in my whole system. I say, no, no, this is not me. This is really not at all reflective of me. So let me know, is it clear or not? So you should have these alarm bells going when you default to something. If you go out and buy a lot of T-shirts because they're cheap, instead of buying the T-shirts you really want, well, you should have an alarm bell going on, yeah? So decide on something. Just creating the awareness will hardwire it in your brain and you will start noticing and then you will start taking action. Yeah? If you look, um, I sometimes share morning rituals. I can't remember whether... I shared it recently, but I think there's really something to be said of having a morning ritual in place to honor yourself. And that has got to do with self-care too, but you're sort of setting yourself up for your luxurious day. You're setting yourself up to have only the best. You're setting yourself up not to be tolerating, right? Not to be tolerating and only accepting what is best. I think, Andrea, you put up your hand. Do you want to comment? Please go ahead. Uh, I have a question. For me, it's exactly the opposite. I was living, a, I was personal shopper stylist, you know, before and I was working with fashion. And uh, so I had a huge accident, you know, so I broke my ankle. So I, I made a huge transformation. So now I am a storyteller, artist, performer, artist. And... Um, because of the sustainability and all this journey, I'm going from this to a totally other direction. So I had to change all my wardrobe and everything. But my question is like in relationships, because they were used to see me with Prada, Gucci and all this, you know, so and traveling all over the world, you know, in the biggest luxurious uh, uh, hotels. And now it's, it's totally different. So I don't know how to think about, you know, my life now how um how is because this this is very strange for me because my relationship everything is transformed you know but do you like your life now better than before 
I feel uh, that uh, I create my life totally. So that is that it, this is a, this is a spiritual journey I had to do. So, but but yes, I feel like uh, you know the relationship is like because they were used to see me in a way. You know, I am different now, and I, I am I am uh, my values changed, and and I don't understand now how could I put so much money on a on a designer bag. You know, it's like. It's it's unbelievable that I, I was, you know, wasting like that, that I was doing. So it's like, you know, for me, it's totally the opposite. And mm -hmm. those people who I was used to associate with and were being friends with, you know, it, it's, it's very hard because I am totally different now. And um, so what is hard about it, Andrea? I don't know. It's like um, both the economical that I don't have the same resources mm -hmm. and uh, also mm -hmm. um, um, that uh, I don't know. The, the the biggest problem is that I see through people, you know, I see through fake things. and I see... mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe this is a blessing in disguise, right? <laughs> Yes, but it's not easy as a person. Guys, yeah, I, I don't want to go too deep into it here, perhaps at the end. Okay, because for people who are here, I, because we need to dig a little bit deeper and there's some questions I want to ask. And I don't want to interrupt that for everybody in case they want to get the contact. So is it okay with you if we go into this either at the end or in a session after it? Yeah, yeah I was just thinking like, how can you up-level luxury in relationships when you do something? Yeah. Because I yeah. think that is also a relationship. That's the, that's a lush area of life, no? Okay. So let's talk about relationships. Yeah. I'm just going to put your hand down. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to stop your sound. And in relationships, how can you up level in relationships? You can stop tolerating what you might have been tolerating before. You can have a look at what you accepted before and what you're no longer willing to accept that is one way to up level then you can also get very clear on how you want to be in a relationship if it's a relationship with your mother how do you want to be with your mother and then have that be your standard if you are the mother how do you want to be a mother what are your values as a mother how do you want to be the mother what does that look like? So it's again, you look at that area, when you default, perhaps you're a mother who screams at your children, right? Maybe you want to stop that and say, oh no, my standard, upper level standard of a mother is a mother who doesn't scream at her children. Right? So when you scream at your children, because this will happen again, right? It will keep happening. I will recognize it. And then what will I do? If it's in a romantic relationship, maybe you've been used to putting up with something in your previous relationships, right? Maybe you've been putting up with a lot of stuff that you're no longer willing to put up with or tolerate. So you work on your boundaries and we are going to do that a little bit towards the end. Yeah. So does that help you a little bit, Andrea? Oh, it, it's uh, muted and not so much because it, it's, it's more about friends I feel not uh, about yeah. men and all this because I, I divorced I left everything and I left my friends and then oh, everybody was not resonating with me and my friend my my son is the best ever we have the best relationship ever yeah. my mother I had to leave too because she was did not um, resonate with my new life you know so yeah, yeah so I, I, I feel we have to go in into this specifically okay so i'm going to come back to you towards the end is that okay yeah okay thank you right so i've got a lot of comments now yeah no more old navy yeah if you don't like old navy you're allowed to wear colors right so you did the same thing you cleaned out you sold a ton of heels and designer bags. Wow, downsize. But I still love my luxury in a different way. And you got rid of people. Okay. Now only I'm with good people. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. 
Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes, getting back to, to our training, to our workshop. Um, I can of course give many more examples, but I feel we really need to move on a little bit. So let me get back to the workbook, which is then about your new standards, because we can act out our standards both with our thoughts, with what we say, and with what we do. So whether that be in relationships with your friends, whether that be with your food, in your clothes, whatever, you can start defining your new standards. What do you think when you've up-leveled into the area that you've up-leveled up up into? What do I really think? If I up-leveled my office space, what would I be thinking? I'd be thinking, oh, there's a very important person working here. That's one thought. What would I be thinking? Hmm, I would really be enjoying. I enjoy this space so much. I'm excited by it. I like being here. I like working here, is what I'd be thinking. What would I say? What would I say about these new standards? I would say to myself, I'm the kind of person who denies herself no luxury in her work. I would say, I completely deserve the most gorgeous office ever. And I think I would come to work with a lot more pleasure. That would be difficult to, to imagine, but I think I could bring in more, even more pleasure. What would I do? So my new standards, in my new standards, my office is always tidy. Everything is always in its place. I've got beautiful objects surrounding me. And, and, and I would be taking it all in, which I'm coming to that later, but I'd really be noticing it. I would be noticing it and perhaps even bring in different things to my office every day to remind me because we get used to stuff, right? That's what I'm going to talk about later. We get so used to them, we stop seeing them. So how could I keep enjoying everything to its maximum? What would I do? Maybe I could play around with bringing in different stuff, different ornaments, different flowers, different plants, lots of things I could do. But what are you choosing in your new standards? What are you thinking there? I'm worth it, or this is me, or what could you be thinking? What could you be saying? Maybe you want to share in the chat, please go ahead if you do. And if you need some inspiration, let me know. Mm. Yeah. So moving on, that's about behavior. You could say my self-worth is reflected in the way that I um, set the table up beautifully for me to have my meals. My self-worth is reflected in not put, having the, the alarm bell go off in the morning. My self-worth is reflected in the way I take such good care of myself. My self-worth is reflected in the way I take the time to do my exercises. So one of the things I decided not to do is I will never rush. Right? So when I rush, I can just remind myself, oh, excuse me, you up leveled into no rushing. I don't like the feeling of rush. So I leave myself more time to do things. That's another luxury, right? Leaving myself more time. And then think about what would exquisite self-care for this person look like? For this person whose self-worth is so high. And on the note of self-worth, let me just remind you that when you think highly of yourself, it doesn't mean that you think you are better than other people, right? It doesn't mean that you think you are worth less than other people, worth more than other people. It just means 
that you value yourself at your just value and your value is the same as anybody else, right? So what self-care could you put in place for that gorgeous person that you are becoming? What would that self-care look like? Would it be to bring in bath salts in your morning routine or your evening routine? Would it be to get your hair cut? To find a personal dresser, a personal shopper? Yeah. So I'm going to change clothes. I want to get some soft and pretty shirts and dresses, yeah. You hate to shop, yeah. Well, you can get a personal shopper, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like shopping either. I like finding, but I don't like the work involved. <laughs> so I'm like you. I've tried out a few personal shoppers, but I haven't met anybody yet. Oh, yes, you love to shop. Well, you're a professional, right? You are a professional. So think about the self-care what would need what would you need to put in place for this up level how would you take care of the person how would you like if you were here in the previous workshop i asked what does this person require to function optimally and i think that's a good self-care self-care question because with luxury some people see self-care as luxury but with luxury we're really leaving behind that whole world of scarcity, of want, of depletion, of desperation, right? And we're saying, I'm leaving that behind and I'm choosing something different. So what would that require in terms of self-care? If I choose to up-level to healthy food, what would self-care look like? Like I, I got somebody to, to prepare our meals because I committed to eating healthily. I like vegetables. I think eating vegetables is very healthy. But I couldn't be bothered to prepare them. So I got a person to do it for me, to prepare the whole meal. That's an up level for me, right? Slowing down, would slowing down be a luxury that you want to commit to, yeah. I think all life improvements are made when we slow down. I don't think we can transform by hurrying through it. I think the more time we take for everything we do, be it brushing our teeth, preparing for bed, sitting down to work, whatever it is, the more intention we bring in and the more we slow down, the more life transformation there is in it. We can really, really vamp up on our happiness. You love chopping veggies, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so when you want to do something, have it be easier. I love the idea of everything being easier, but don't drop your standards, right? It would be easier for me to get ready-made meals, industrially transformed and whatever, but that would be down-leveling. <laughs> that would be dropping my standards, right? So I want to keep my standards up here with my healthy eating, and I want to find something that will allow me to keep them up here. And the the solution I found was to have somebody help me prepare meals. So what would exquisite self-care for this person look like? And when we ask that, we need to put up some boundaries. We need to put up boundaries perhaps with our friends, perhaps with our mothers, perhaps with our employers. We have to ask ourselves, my boundaries with others now in this up-leveled, this luxury version where I'm allowing in much more luxury into just one specific area in my life to start off with, and then I can up-level in others. What am I no longer available for? Like, I'm no longer available for gossip. I'm no longer available for synthetic materials 
when I when we're talking about clothing. I'm no longer available for a lot of things. And what are those things for you? What are you no longer available for with your friends? Maybe you're no longer available for over drinking with your friends. What are you no longer available for? Maybe you're no longer available for answering the phone all the time. Maybe you're available for not for, for only quality connection and the quality connection can only take place when you have got the time for it. So maybe you're not available for answering your emails all the time, for answering your phone all the time, for being always connected. You see what I mean? So, okay. You could barter with a personal shopper. Yeah. And they could shop for me. But then we have invented money, Laurie. We have invented money to make bartering easier. Okay. So that was Janice's idea to barter. Yeah. So Janice, if you want some coaching on this, you're suggesting sales, you're suggesting bartering. Just ask yourself, why do I believe that I can't afford luxury by paying for it. Where is that true? Where is that true in your life? Where is the place inside me where I feel I have to get what I desire through bartering, through sales, through thrift, uh, thrift shops? Yeah, and this is not a criticism. It's just to become aware. What is it? What is it? Because I, I feel that we invented money so that it would be easier to have transactions, right? So tell me what your, what your feelings are, Janice. I'd love to know. Ask yourself, with myself, I no longer tolerate um, navy blue colored clothes. I'll no longer tolerate, I don't tolerate any synthetic material. I only want natural fabrics on, on me. So with myself, I no longer tolerate these external things, but maybe I, I'm no longer available for, and I will no longer tolerate uh, beating myself up. I'm no longer available for that. When my inner critic tells me, that I'm too fat to wear this gorgeous dress, I will no longer tolerate that. I will tell her off. Right? To so ask yourself, what am I not available for? What do I no longer want to tolerate in the specific area that you chose? And coming to the investment in question 11, where am I not benefiting from the true value? And by that, I want you to think about, like I said, my biggest luxury is not putting on the alarm clock in the morning. So where am I not completely benefiting from that? Well, if I forget that this is my luxury, if I forget to enjoy it, then I'm no longer benefiting from the full value of it. I really want to remind myself every morning how gorgeous it is to wake up in my gorgeous bed, to feel the soft sheets and the pillows and the luxury of not having to get up and rush, right? I've got the ritual in place where I'm there in bed and I'm waking up slowly. I'm listening for the birds outside. I'm looking at the light. Is the light coming through my shutters? Is it morning yet? What is the light like? How can I enjoy this lighting? Can I see anything? Is it dark night? You know, just becoming aware very slowly. And that is how I get the full benefit out of it. I need to have these rituals in place where I'm reminded of how I can savor my luxuries. So a new handbag, how can you savor that? 
how can you enjoy it to the full? Well, you must sometimes take some time to notice it, to really feel perhaps material, to look at the craftsmanship in it, to really connect with it. If you've up-leveled in your friendships, then just take the time to say to yourself, I'm so fortunate. I'm so fortunate. I can ring this person up and know that I will have a quality conversation. I will have a deep conversation about something that is super important to me. There's nothing I cannot tell this person. And then you can ring that person or not, but just knowing it, delighting in it, reminding ourselves that this is what is available to us now because we've up-leveled. If you've up-leveled through taking something away, if you've stopped calling people you're no longer really aligned with, whom you no longer appreciate, then you can just sit down and say, oh, how gorgeous, I no longer have to phone that person. I no longer have to keep in touch with them. Mm, this frees up not only my time on the phone, it frees up time to do something I enjoy much more. It frees time just to look out of the window or maybe sit five minutes in the sun, right? So, Laurie says, I won't tolerate clutter. I'm not soft and comfortable, yeah. It's drum and takers, I'm not sure. Okay, or ugly, yeah, you like pretty clothes, yeah. Oh, is it a hurricane going on? Yeah, I've read about that. Hmm, yeah. I also love the idea of craftsmanship and I really love seeing that around me. I like to surround myself with that, what I associate with quality. And I feel that if people have put their craftsmanship into it. There's some sort of transmission here between people. There's a transmission perhaps of, of love, of, of a love of, of, no, a labor of love. I always want to say a love of labor, right? Because that is me a bit, but a labor of love. And I think we really transmit that. I don't know whether it was because, um, it's because I was used to be a musician. And so when we work, it really is, about love and it's really about transmission. So um, that's why I feel it's so important. I like getting something out of plastic that was made in a factory and that no human hand has touched. It just doesn't do it for me. That's not what I'm after. I want to be surrounded by all these crafted quality things and these crafted quality friendships. And sometimes the other, the other evening, I thought, oh, I, I want a little bit of luxury now. Let me call up my best friend or one of my best friends in Denmark and hear how she's doing, right? Just taking the time, not doing other stuff. She was not able to do that. She felt she had to fill the dishwasher and do some cooking while we were chatting. And that's okay. But I wanted to offer myself the fullness of it. I wanted to be there 100%. I wanted to listen and I wanted to express myself. I didn't want to couple it with anything else, right? I wanted the full enjoyment. I wanted my, the full value of my time investment. So often now, I, I still cook on weekends. And this, this weekend, for instance, we've got the house full of guests, which is lovely. But I will be doing a lot of cooking, but I want to do it mindfully. So I could be listening to a lot of podcasts while I cook, but I could also just peel the carrots and really enjoy that. Right? Do you see what I mean? I could be putting my full attention to it so that I get the full value of it. I'm the sort of person who cooks healthy, sumptuous, taste, tasty meals that people enjoy. That's a value I want to receive. And so I'm getting a little bit intentional about it. Do you see what I mean? It's difficult to be intentional about something that we are 
multitasking our way through. And I think also one of my definitions of luxury is that they serve no purpose. They are there for the enjoyment. And I'm just leaving some time here for you to think about it. Luxury, it doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever. And coming back to the workbook, there's just one last question I wanted to share with you. Okay, intentional, yes. Oh, Laurie, that is gorgeous. Be intentional about how you dress. That is I mean, I think in personal development, we don't use the value of dressing enough, of taking care of our bodies, of taking care of our person, right? Think about having a baby and dressing the baby. I mean, how would you dress a baby? You would dress it with the utmost care. And I love in the morning feeling into how I want to feel, Glory feeling into how I want to feel and how I can then dress for it. So I feel that I'm bringing that with me into all the experiences of the day. Today, I chose to wear this dress because um, I wore it recently in, a, in my chateau experience. I don't know whether I've shared that with you, but I went to a chateau recently with a lot of gorgeous ladies and we had the best time ever. And I wore this dress on one day and I haven't washed it since. I said, oh, I want to bring this with me into our workshop. This is what I want. This is a feeling I want for myself. Obviously, if I hadn't talked about it, you wouldn't know it, right? But that doesn't matter. I'm full of that. I'm full of that intention. I'm full of that energy. And you get to share it with me consciously or subconsciously, if you see what I mean. So how can I show myself my worthiness on a daily basis? And you can do that through your dressing in the morning, Laurie, or changing clothes through the day. My, my new concept is that I want to dress for the night too. If I put as much intention into what I wear at night as I do to what I wear during the day, how am I experience? of it be? And how worthy will I feel when I really take care of what I put on my body to sleep? I can put on jewelry too, right? I could do anything I want to feel, feel my worthiness when I go to bed. So how can you show yourself your worthiness through this up level on a daily basis? Yes, please do, Andrea. I could, I could talk for another hour on intention, but I won't. But that can really up-level your experience and you can really get the full value out of any experience if you are intentional about it. So uh, this summer, my husband put out a hammock in some trees we've got here. And I thought, let me have really the best experience ever in that hammock, right? So birds are singing like this full of green leaves above me. Let me just feel into this experience. Like, let me just enjoy it fully. So I don't need to drink a cup of tea. I don't need to be reading a book. Like, let me just feel the experience in this hammock. Let me just enjoy that to the full. Let me enjoy it. And I enjoy it by telling myself, Katrina, you're going to spend 10 minutes in the hammock and you're going to, to take everything in. You're going to feel it on your skin. You're going to smell it. You're going to see it. You're going to hear it. You're going to engage with all your senses, right? Like I always say, I want to live my life with all my senses engaged. Like how I experience life is through my senses, not through my brain. Right? So I'm always very aware of how I can have all my senses participate in whatever I'm, I'm experiencing. Right? What can I hear? What can I sense on my skin? What can I smell? Right? 
So how can you get the full benefit out? And how can you, what was my last question? How can you show yourself that you are so worthy of the most luxurious experience that you want? And it really is about identifying your new standards and and just admit that these are your new standards. These are your new standard. And that's how it, it, it is. It just is, right? That's how you get comfortable with it. That's how you get comfortable setting the table with the white tablecloth and the beautiful roses, right? When people come and visit me, they say, oh, no, don't bother. Excuse me. <laughs> This is for me. If you enjoy it, fabulous. If you can't enjoy it, well, you, you can't enjoy it. And that's not a problem either, right? But I'm doing this for me. You can partake of it if, if you are so inclined, you know, but you don't have to. But please don't tell me not to bother because I always want to bother for myself, right? I really want to bother. I don't know whether that's a British expression that you can't understand if you live somewhere else, but I really am prepared to go to an extreme length for my experience to be the best. I really want to take care of myself to the point where I go out of my way to have it be the best experience ever. And I can do that through intention. Yeah. I want to sit down, enjoy my meal, my healthy meal in the best environment that I can create. And when I talk about luxury, I can also have a meal outside in nature, like eating with my hands or something. That is also fine with me. I can do both, right? I don't need luxury. I desire it and I choose it. And I also sometimes choose to sleep outside on the ground in a sleeping bag. So we just came back from a cycling trip. And on a cycling trip, we can sleep one night in a five-star hotel and the next night outside in an olive grove. They can both exist in my life and I can get a maximum of well-being and happiness, enjoyment out of any experience that I have chosen. The thing is choice to me. I have set myself up for this gorgeous experience through my intention and through taking care of myself. And now I get to enjoy it. I don't tolerate anything random like that being placed on me because I want to curate my experience. I want to get rid of what is not supporting my standards and I want to bring in things to remind me of my standards so to remind me to eat healthy I bring in vegetables at all meals always vegetables all right so I'm not depriving myself by not eating this not eating that and all that boring stuff I'm eating healthily by bringing stuff in such as vegetables and lots of other good things. Quality produce. Yeah. That's how I take care of myself. My standards are these. I can choose luxury not because I need it, but because I desire it. I want it. And I can allow myself to want it. And I can allow myself to say I want it. And that's all perfect. So maybe there is a lot of contrast in my life between my most luxurious moments and my most basic or frugal or sort of moments where I, I wasn't in luxury. But then I always find the luxury, even sleeping on the ground in my sleeping bag. Like when we went to, to sleep in the olive grove, we had the whole sky lit up by stars. And we saw a shooting star. I mean, isn't that luxury? Isn't that a, 
an experience that you wouldn't be without. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to go out and sleep on the ground, right? I'm not saying that, but maybe you want to look up into the sky when there's stars there and take it in. Say, oh, I'm doing this intentionally just to feel the beauty of it. To feel that I'm part of all this. Right? I'm gifting myself this moment where I really feel it. So you live intentionally, you say, I just forgot to see that in the luxury of life. Okay. Wow. And Laurie says, my best friend just sent me the most beautiful silky nightgown. Mm. What a gift. What a gift. Isn't she a kind friend? And I hope your shoulder is feeling better. Yeah. Okay, I know that shoulder surgery can be very painful. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, yeah, but you, you don't need to sleep on the ground to see the stars. It was just like it got dark so early in the night and we were, we were sitting there and thinking, well, what can we do? Well, let's just look at the night sky and let's just take all that in, that whole experience. And, and the thing about luxury is that it needn't be just for you, right? The night sky was there for anybody. We didn't have any monopoly. And I think any luxury we choose, it's not taking anything away from other people, is it? Actually, often when we choose luxury, it allows other people to make a living. Like when I chose the luxury of having somebody prepare our meals during the week, I created work for somebody else who loves cooking. So I'm participating in that, right? Maybe then she can allow herself some more luxury with this side business, yeah? So really, the more we allow ourselves to enjoy luxury, the more we are up-leveling perhaps, up perhaps other people's experience. Okay. Oh, Corey left. Yeah. She loved the concept of luxury. Yeah. I think sometimes we link luxury to money. And of course, it can be linked. But sometimes we needn't. We really needn't. We could look at the luxury, we can allow ourselves. And I don't like to say afford because that sort of limits us. And if we think of, of really, well, what luxury can I allow myself? Can I allow myself this green dress, for instance? Can I allow myself that? Not can I afford it? Can I allow myself to have my, my worthiness reflected through my choices in the care I take of myself? That is really the luxury I'm talking about. So let's come to an end and I'm taking all your questions or comments if you want us to dive deeper into any sort of concept. And I know that Andrea would like to talk about her friendships and I'm perfectly willing to do so. Uh, also, for those of you who want to, oh, who want to book a free consult where we can dive into your relationship with um, luxury, but we can see where you are making luxury the enemy, where you are block, blocking your own access to luxury. And that is, of course, also to do with your self-worth. And it could be that you are suffering from a sort of scarcity mindset in more than one area. Please go ahead and book yourself a gorgeous session where we will dive deep. And we'll also look at whether if you, if you believe that coaching could really get you to the next level. Coaching is a powerful tool, right? When we work on our mindset, when we work on our surroundings, when we work on our boundaries, and when we up-level our standards, our life transforms. And it starts with us transforming. We transform from the inside out, and then we have the outside confirm the transformation, right? Starts with us, 
it builds up it spills out onto the inside then the oh, the outside and then the outside reflects back to us how we've up leveled yeah so you need you learn that you need to slow down and be intentional yeah exactly exactly that is so so good of course we all love a bargain right we all love a bargain but let's not deprive ourselves from what we really want and i love this idea but what it happens to me that i i choose my clothes without looking at the price tag and when i do look i say i'm not willing to spend that much money right and that's okay that's a boundary right i'm not willing to spend that amount that's okay too okay but when we choose through the price tag then we're not really allowing our desires right we're sort of muffling it all by persuading ourselves that we should be getting this item when we could be really allowing ourselves to desire that item and really take that seriously because you know i'm all for taking our desires seriously for me that is true self-love so we work on that through the self-care through the self-love that we are willing to bestow on ourselves and that could be luxury i think we all we all want more luxury into our lives and we need also to look at how we can enjoy it to the full how we can get the most value out of our investment yes quite get that t-shirt at 60 dollars i mean who needs five t-shirts anyway might not have one that will last you much longer look much better right might not be uh, made by starving children or something like that yeah do you see what i mean we really get to make a lot of choices in life we really do so, and i'm delighted I, I live in france so i don't know where you, where you live and whether it's the same but in france there are so many new companies working in fashion and i say fashion working in the clothing industry having it be responsible right so we really are changing and that's thanks to our young people i, I coach also in a business school and all these young business people they are really looking at the whole idea of producing respectfully not just to the environment but also to people right and we want to bring that to the consumers or I, i'm really in love with that whole theory that we want to buy things that we can be fully behind right we don't want to buy things that that are not produced in a way that we would feel good about and i think this is gaining this is gaining ground right here where i live at any rate so i hope that's the case with you too but let's let's move over to andrea and drive into her real question about friendships do you want to do that andrea yeah, I, I, I think yeah, I got um, a little bit the answer because you were talking about curating your experiences. And that 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 was something uh, very interesting. I mean, I curate all my art. I curate every experience. I curate my, create my life, all this. Yeah. But I didn't think about friendships like you curate them. It was very interesting. Uh, it's, a, it's a different mindset. It is. It yeah. is about what you tolerate, what you're available for. Exactly. And, and yeah. because I shifted from the inside, I do not tolerate some yeah. things, you know, and um, yeah. So, for instance, about complaining, if you've got friends who complain, maybe you can tell them, look, I'm no longer available for complaining. I want to talk about the good things in life. If there are no, if you can't see any good things in life, then I'm not available. Yeah, that's that's exactly how it is but uh, it, it's still very hard to shift into yeah but just... nobody has time especially if people are are successful you know and um, i work very hard because i worked uh, with a huge charity project two years uh, making a movie and all this you know and uh, yeah uh, i am uh, myself very very busy yeah but I i'm think... not I think it's uh, that 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 was also something that I have to think about uh, when you yeah. speak about my best friend. Do exactly as you told her. She is cooking. She's doing all this stuff, and um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, 
So and what, I, what, I, I consider what? myself a successful person. And that's really what's most important. I don't care what other people consider me. I consider myself a successful person. And I'm not busy. I'm not choosing busyness. I don't have to be hardworking to be successful. Mm. I don't like hard work. I like fun work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Where are all the fun people, you know, because everybody's like, uh, you know, survival. They are like, Ooh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what they're doing. So that's another thing we can do. I talked a little bit about going to the lobby of a luxury hotel, but we really can put ourselves in an environment both through the people we, we, we meet up with, mm. the people we cultivate, the conversations we have, mm. right? We don't have to settle for anything. We really can curate it. Also, we can put ourselves, if we, if we want to bring in more luxury, we can go, like the other day, I could have gone to a health, sort of healthy restaurant where they've got very healthy, organically grown food and it's all very good, but I wanted a bit more luxury. So, I went into a luxury restaurant and had a gorgeous meal that was healthy too, but you know, mm. oh, this feels good to me, right? So I can put myself in, in those environments where we feel, oh, oh, this is a bit of a stretch for me. Oh, I actually enjoy this. And we can do that with our friendships. Mm. Let me just associate with people who are at my level or higher. Let me associate with people whom I aspire to, yeah? Yeah. That's the idea of masterminds, mm. yeah? You, you surround yourself with people who are on that journey, but a bit further along than you are, perhaps, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way I try to think, but many of them, they don't have time, you know? To... Yeah. Mostly business meetings. I know when I started to uplevel my life, I got I lost a lot of friends. And how did I you got some new you, ones? But uh, did you take long time or how, how did you how was the, that journey the and the new journey with the journey with my friends? Yes, with the new. Well, as soon as I put myself in an environment where these people are, the people who mm -hmm. are positive, the people who enjoy life, the people who are in a growth mindset. I appreciate that kind of person who could be nothing like me, I don't mind, but who has got an open mind and who believes that they are actually designing their lives. So they believe they've got choice and they believe they can decide. And so they've got direction in life, right? That's it, so important. Yeah, it's, it's so important. I don't enjoy being with people who think that you're just life is happening right so oh I just got to bear it yeah that doesn't inspire me right and I don't enjoy because we're quickly going to get onto a subject where we don't agree so I don't enjoy that right mm -hmm. if somebody comes to me wants to be my friend who's a bit of a victim saying oh this happened to me this happened to me and I can do nothing about it <laughs> then I'm not going to enjoy our conversation very much right because of course same. things happen to us like you breaking your ankles and you having to reevaluate your life things do happen to us and we don't have to blame ourselves for them happening right but mm. let's never forget that we have got a choice in how we want to react mm. to our lives right we have got that power so dreadful things can happen to to us we can have a shoulder operation that hurts right but thank goodness we have got that opportunity to have the operation right thank goodness and let me just choose to have the operation and let me just choose who I associate with. Let me just choose where I live. Let me just choose my surroundings because I have got a choice, right? Mm -hmm. Right now I want to live in a chateau and I'm getting there, right? I'm enjoying how I get there. I'm enjoying who I'm becoming going to my chateau. So I'm already enjoying the experience. I don't have to wait to enjoy it till I get there. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So you can go through a phase where you feel that, okay, I've got less and less friends. But then if you're not enjoying that friendship, you're not losing anything, right? And as they leave you, 
you're making room for other people who have got time. Mm. I know a lot of successful people. I know a whole bunch of successful people and they have got time for what they appreciate. So think of it, friends who haven't got time for you, they haven't got time for, they, for what they appreciate. True. Yeah. They, haven't, they are not making conscious choices in their lives. Mm. Right? Yeah. And we can't change other people. So we've either got to take them as they are or not take them. Mm. Yeah. I'm not available for friendships that are superficial. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not available for friendships where people want to change me or tell me what's right and what's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm not available for any kind of relationship that doesn't make me feel good. Mm. I'm just not available. Mm. Thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> I don't have to be aggressive about it. I don't have to tell people what's wrong with them. It's just, no, thank you. I'm not available. So Isabella says, I will not, oh, I've missed something. Yeah, fun people, yeah. So we have a saying in Italian that goes, the more you spend, the less you spend. Okay, yeah. I know that means that in the long run, an expensive item is a money saver, yes, because it will last for a long time. And you worked in fashion too, wow. <laughs> I know, I know. She says it's 1,000% or 10,000% true for clothes, wow, yeah, and accessories. Isn't mm. it just so? Mm. But I think we want that cheap fashion. Or we want that fast fashion because we're not sure of our choices. It stems from uncertainty. We don't want to commit, yeah? So if you buy a Chanel outfit, it's going to cost you that much money and then you better enjoy it. <laughs> and I think with fast fashion, it's so much easier to buy three pairs of trousers and five T-shirts and all that for next to no money because we are not really committed. We, we are thinking subconsciously, oh, I can just change my mind it doesn't matter I can get rid of them but whereas if we've spent a small fortune on something that we believe we want but we are not absolutely 100% sure that we want it or we think we should want it and there's a lot of questioning happening here and I think it's from the uncertainty it's the uncertainty that prevents us from committing via our money Mm. Right? it's the uncertainty will I really like it once I get that outfit will I really like it will I like it in five years from now I think that's the uncertainty but it's lovely to have all these these people from from different walks of life with us here so yeah so Isabella your advice is very valuable to Laurie yeah I did that with handbags and shoes. Yeah, you need to do that, but you don't need to, you can choose to, right? We don't need anything other than, than food and water and shelter and sleep, right? The rest of it is perhaps not luxury, but it's so interesting to look at where we get the most bang for our buck. Is that the expression? Yeah, all you need is love, it is, yeah. <laughs> right. So we can really allow ourselves to be comfortable with any level of luxury. I think I said in my email that um, for some people having a butler, a private jet, a nanny for their children, full-time nanny or two, like that is just normal. So there is really no right normal. That's just a normal we choose to be right so for me the normal thing to eat a meal is to have a beautiful table anybody who visits who thinks let's not do that it's just not an option for me right I don't want to lower myself down to other people's standards my standards are here and I keep them high and those who can't join me here it's just goodbye <laughs> And that doesn't need to say anything about me. It says mm. something about them. 
It just says their standards are not up to mine. That's all. Mm. That's all. They can be perfectly kind and loving and gorgeous people. And I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah. But I can't be dragging people with me who don't meet my standards. Do you see what I mean? Mm. I can't be dragging a bedroom with me that doesn't meet my standards. I can't be dragging clothes with me that don't meet my standards. I can't be traveling anywhere that doesn't meet my standard. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So think of it like that. These are my standards, but it, it, it requires us to be aware of, of where we want to put our standards. And that's why I talk about luxury because it really allows us to up level because we are in an, uh, an environment where we have a lot of make do's. Yeah. Okay. I can't afford this. or I don't deserve this. or I'll just stay with this horrible job forever because it pays me my rent or whatever it is we tell ourselves. And that is so depressing, right? When all this luxury is available to us, we just have to start. Okay, yeah, please do, please do, Laurie. So have you got any questions on anything? I'd love to know. I know I'm going over time, but I think we've got all the content in on time. So let me know if there's anything you want to share. Yeah, Mary Kondo, she was a revolution, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, to me, it's a bit unrealistic, Mary Kondo, but um, for, for my standards, but, you know, whatever works for you. Right. So. People have generational beliefs they inherit. Yeah, of course. Mm. We, we come all furnished with beliefs. Right. Mm. We have beliefs that we inherit, and one of them is our money mindset. And I feel that that trips up so many people because it's really something that is deeply anchored. And we, we, we believe it's true. We think that our thoughts are reality, don't we? Mm. We think that if we think something, it's reality, like it's the news being broadcast. I can't afford a T-shirt that costs 60 Dollars. I can't afford that. We think that is reality and it's just a thought, isn't it? It really is. So we come with, yes, you're right. Thoughts are just thoughts, not facts. So we come with all these beliefs and we inherit them. Yes, actually, there's so much research being done at the moment, which is perhaps obliging us to change how we see heredity because they are finding that we can actually inherit trauma. Mm. So I'm not sure exactly where that, that is at, and I'm not a scientist, but I find that really thought provoking, don't you? If we can inherit trauma, what else have we inherited? What transformational energy work do you do or recommend? Well, that's a big question, Janice. <laughs> that's a big question. Um, I believe in transformation from the inside, and I believe that we can be, do, and have anything we want. Um, it would be difficult right now to answer that in a few sentences. Shamanic and alchemy. I don't know anything about that. So you'll have to consult with Andrea on that, perhaps, Janice. <laughs> you, you know, everything is energy. It clothes yeah. are energy. Everything is energy. That's why, we, and as, as you say, when you change the environment is because mm. you, you... Of course. So it's like very interesting um, yeah. to think about luxury, as you say, because I, I did not think about luxury the way, the way you put it. Very interesting. So, of course, it is energy, but I believe that we have power over our own energy via our thoughts, feelings. Everything. Even ancestral, we have to, but it, it's most of the time you need to break like uh, seven chains. Yeah, I like to start with myself and I haven't gotten beyond <laughs> that yet. So <laughs> That is good. <laughs> it's, it's a good start. Yeah, I'll just stay with myself for the moment. So you want to come on, Janice? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, so thank you. Number one, my father raised us and he always said, um, food, clothing, and shelter is all you need. The rest is luxury. And for me, I've always loved luxury. I must have been rich in some life, maybe not this one. And so seriously, but then unfortunately, like I was doing okay. And then um, unexpectedly, I had a reaction to medication. And so my whole life, I'm not going to be long about it, went down the toilets, but I lost, I lost my income. So now I, I live on a very small pension and donations and everything, but I still have the taste for luxury, but I'm not living it, you know? And so, um, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's like the lady that broke her ankle in a way when you are limited, especially physical, because we are definitely spirits in a physical body. When you don't have a part of your body working, it becomes a luxury. It becomes a luxury, like for you to go running or for me, it was, it's still a little bit of digestion, everything like that. So I think what happens is, is that your whole outlook and actually who you are changes. You know what I mean? So even within that definition of luxury, as life gives you its challenges, um, it radically changes to bring you onto the correct path is what I think. And in terms of the energy work, I've done lots. I've done lots of healing work, but I always believe God works through me. I'm not, I'm not the root cause. But I guess all I could say is a lot of transformation happens because those beliefs are very rooted in us. And sometimes because they're unconscious, we don't even know. That's the thing that's really interesting. We, we picked up something from our parents who picked it up from the grandparents. And like you said, it's all truth. And then all of a sudden through kinesiology, in other words, muscle testing or other things, we can find a belief. And with a good partner, somebody who's trained and often ourselves, we can release it. And it's like the colored glasses we had might've been gray. And all of a sudden they're into emerald green you know but i think um i guess the thing is is that when we meet with and this is my experience fear and resistance take a real good look that's where we should be stepping forward and saying uh thank you for showing me the next barrier you know mm -hmm. and i think that's sort of on a road to luxury and that luxury um is different for each person you know, yeah. like you were saying, it's it's so different. So that's all I just wanted to say. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you very much, wow. Janice. And can I just comment on that? Please do. I, I understand that your life was suddenly changed, right? Huge, huge. Yeah. And your opportunity is exactly here that you can choose how you react to that. Yeah. And it sounds as if you are. And also, I would like for you to think about what you can bring in that is luxurious to you, but that you feel that you can allow. I do, and that's why it's so perfect because all of a sudden the last couple of days I kept hearing in my head my dad's voice about you know, food and shelter and going, oh my God, I've lived into this. This is really awful. <laughs> and that was not awful, I'm, gra I'm grateful. Like I have a house and everything at home. Um, I guess the one thing is I'm luxurious in my eating because it's really, really important. And thank God I can do it, you know, while I can do it. Um, but I think, I think for us to thrive, maybe you mentioned that word, what is it in our, in, in each of us? And it's all different, you know, what do we need to thrive? And for some people, and I, by the way, I have flowers too. I think they're awesome. Um, some of us, we, we just need a quiet space. Others of us, we need something else. So it's to really go into our heart space and to say, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world needs. Um, what is it? And, and I think we'll find that even that five-star hotel, and tr trust me, I used to love that. I don't travel anymore. But, you know, can what, what can we do to get the feeling? Because I think once we get the feeling, I think that also sparks the creativity of bringing in more of it in whatever form we need mm. Mm. Yeah. that is so true that is mm. so true mm. and for you to be able to talk about it like I can't see any bitterness or any regrets in it it's it's really it's gorgeous to hear so thank well, you you know what? I'll just tell you one more thing um there's a number of people in life and 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 you know um for the lady I'm sorry should be Andrea right when you get into the spiritual, you know, a lot of people and it's becoming more known that have had near death experiences. 
And I, I'm very lucky to be alive and all of us are lucky to be alive. You might not have had an illness to show you, but every day is a day of grace. And yeah, so when you kind of look at it that way, somebody said a good day is when you can put your feet on the floor. <laughs> and, and I think the thing is, even though we go through our emotional ups and downs and we go through our physical stuff, which we're going to, the fact is we're here and we can still taste life. And I think that's the thing. And also to have compassion for ourselves on the day when, you know, you look at your life like it's a horror show and how the heck did you get here? <laughs> so it's like, okay, fine. I call them my white flag days. You just surrender them. And the next day you feel better and you hmm. keep going. So I think, I think I will just say that thank you for, um, for commenting. And I'm going to share with you an, an acronym that I shared with a friend. She loved it. I, I called it, uh, let me just eat Coco. What's Coco? K-O-K-O. It means keep on keeping on, you mm. know, and that that can get you through a lot of stuff. And um, and then but having in mind your idea about luxury on the side, it can come in increments, that joy, that pleasure. Hmm. And enjoying it to the full. Right. Mm, totally. Totally. <sighs> enjoying it to the full. That's a beautiful way to close our workshop. So thank you very much for having been so participative. I really enjoyed that. And all of you had your cameras on. It's a joy to see you too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope this has spurred you on to think about things perhaps differently and in a way that serves you. And I hope that you can allow yourself to be completely comfortable with all the luxury, all the luxury that you can bring into your life because you can. Let's just give ourselves permission. Yeah, I read somewhere that you should thank your our body just for waking up every morning. Yeah, well, without the should, <laughs> I would say in my language it is, I choose to thank my body. I'm not going to put a restraint on myself by saying every morning. <laughs> I choose to be aware that every day is a gift and I'm so grateful to be waking up alive. Yeah. So I love that idea too, Isabella, right? Lovely. Janice is magic. Yes, she is. You are so welcome, Isabella. I enjoyed seeing you. So lovely to meet you. Dorothy, you are welcome. Welcome, welcome. I shall see you perhaps if you book a consult and if not, perhaps in another workshop. I'm looking forward to next time. Lovely. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Goodbye. Oh, let me stop the recording first. <laughs>